whether you're a person who simply loves to cook in your own home kitchen, or someone looking for a home-based job with a sense of passion and purpose, the path to zero hunger in America starts with you. Attorney and specialist in food safety regulation, Stephen Lahat is the key advisor to first food responders. Stephen recognizes the benefits of first food responders to both the environment and society. And critically, Stephen also sees the economic benefits that can come from running your own micro enterprise home kitchen operation, also known as MECO. First food responders uh, can be two different flavors. One flavor is folks that simply wanted to volunteer their services to help in emergency situations. All of a sudden you have immigrants coming over because they're kicked out of their country, a la Ukraine or whatever it might be, and so big-hearted people want to help and want to alleviate the, uh, the crisis for feeding this population that's all of a sudden thrown into their community. That's one thing. But in addition to that, you have the situation where those very same first few responders can actually become micro-businesses. And this became very, very important because with the advent of COVID, many, many, many folks were thrown out of work. And, and so Alexia saw this as an opportunity to create micro-jobs for folks that could do because it was part of their natural, of their regular lifestyle, to do something positive and yet make money in the process. And so she created a model which incorporated not only the folks that were volunteering, but the folks that would actually have micro-businesses. In Riverside County, California, the statewide MECO program is administered by the Office of Environmental Health. So if I love to cook and my kitchen, I could have it inspected and I love to go to like the farmer's market or a farm like this where I can get fresh produce. Right. And then, uh, and I have my favorite recipes that are maybe cultural or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And my neighborhood has a need for those meals. Right. Wow. What, you know, that's a positive and a it way a that I can make some money and I have a purpose in my neighborhood. I'm contributing to a sustainable food system in my neighborhood. I agree, and our department's on the same note. I mean, we try and we talk to a lot of people every day about what different ideas they have, uh, different options they have. And so when it comes to Amico, it's no different. They come to us with an idea of, you know, a family recipe or something they want to try out. Um, we'll talk them through it, we'll see if it's feasible, how, it's, how it could be safely done. Uh, and so that's, that's a big plus for us too. We're very, very into that, very into helping the public with whatever they need. This gives them a different option, a different avenue to make that happen. And so it's been nice for us that way. Patty and Barry Williams, along with Chef Michelle Oliver, are setting a new course for entrepreneurs who love to cook for others in their own home kitchen. This represents a new home-based career that provides housing security, food security, and job security. When I met Alexia, we both um, clicked with, with the fact that we, we are both huge learners of things that we're interested in. I was uh, already interested in um, the health factor of, of just food. Just we realized that there was just something special about that there was more that we could do as individuals, as a family, as a collective, and as, as um, also utilizing what Alexia and, um, and what her family had already done, the, just tons of research in, in regards to. So with that, started this whole process of realizing through Alexia that there was this, this process of going through the county and getting certified in the kitchen because we had never heard of anything of, such, of the nature before. I mean, to, to actually cook in your own, your own uh, home kitchen and make a living out of it at the same time or potentially earn, that was something new to us. The first step was to actually go through the county, apply, um, and then from there, the the number of hours that was required, as she said, it, even though it says, I want to say 35 hours, it really depends on the person, the person and what year, and this is what's critical for Miko's or Micro Enterprise Kitchen Operation, you know, and those who decide to go down that pathway, they're truly entrepreneurs. You're controlling 
control of the ingredients that you put in, how you run, how you operate. And so going through that process, what we realized that someone could do it in 30, in 35 hours, but if you also have a family that you're cooking for, you know, and you have, you know, day-to-day -day things like most of us do, and it may take a little longer. It's a great opportunity for you to be able to share what you love to do as a chef. Um, whether it's, I just love to cook for my family, I love to cook for my friends. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to actually make, uh, whether it's a supplemental income or a primary income, um, the sky's the limit truly because it's up to you. If you want to make 60 meals a week, you want to make 30 meals a week. When you want to cook, you can choose to cook only on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can choose to cook uh, just on the weekends. It's up to you what you want to do, and that's the best part about being a Miko. One of the truly amazing aspects of the First Food Responder family is how home chefs bring together a rich and diverse tapestry of foods, cultures, and experiences. A favorite First Food Responder and Miko businesswoman is Chef Michelle Oliver. Michelle is a fabulous cook and a beacon of light in her neighborhood community of Paris, California in Riverside County. When um, I started communicating with Michelle, it was eye-opening to me that there are people that want to do things on their own, but wow, what patience they have to have just, just to be able to have a conversation um, with someone and get information from someone. So she caught my heart right away. I called Alexia. I told Alexia, Hey, listen, um, I have, I have this person. Um, she just seems so encouraged and, and she wants to go through the, to, through the program. Um, I know we're going to hit some bumps. I know we're going to hit some obstacles because she's not going to be able to, there's gotta be modifications and I'm not sure if those modifications are in place or not. So, do we do this? She says, yes, let's do this. Let's do this. And so um, called Michelle back and told her, listen, we're, we're going to help you. Um, and we're going we're gonna to try to figure this out. I'm going to put you on the scholarship program. And um, we're, we're going to work through the process. And at that point, right away, immediately, we started hitting bumps. Um, because the system that we were going through, the coursework that we were going through, did not have a platform for um, auditory challenges. So. At that point, it was back and forth with the company, trying to get her a platform that she can use to be certified as a kitchen manager. Um, and that took a while. It took longer than, than it should have. But, um, but she did it, and she, she, she got through it. She passed her exam. Um, the kitchen inspection came next for her. Uh, probably came a lot easier than the coursework. Um, we, we paid for her inspection. Um, Alexia paid for her inspection. and. Um, Got her, got her going. Immediately, she started serving as a first food responder. Um, Alexia gave her some clients, and she was able to sustain, you know, her, 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 her income during during COVID. The customers appreciate the range of family favorite food specialties that these Mikos bring to the table as well as the contributions they make to their communities as first food responders.